Uh, all right. Welcome everybody it, to another Bright ID AMA. It is June 16th, 2022. Uh, crypto markets have been wild the last week or two. Hopefully they'll calm down a bit. Uh, excited to have all of you here talk about Bright ID and specifically today, uh, we're gonna talk a bunch about uh, Unitap, one of the newest uh, things that integrates Bright ID. Uh, and, and is a, a basic um, functionality that a lot of the Bread ID folks have, have dreamed about existing for a long time. Uh, and now in a small way it does, and we hope that we can uh, build Unitap into a great tool for uh, loads of users and projects and networks and communities uh, to all uh, help spread the crypto love. So welcome all. Uh, yeah, so uh, unitap.app uh, uh, is, is where you can access the application. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and go to unitap.app and, and check it out. Um, it's, a, it's a place where uh, users today can claim very small amounts of uh, gas uh, tokens on on various networks, uh, including Gnosis Chain and uh, ID Chain and a number of the Ethereum test nets. Uh, in the future, we hope there'll be many more networks there. Uh, and uh, in the future, there'll also be uh, a way to access tokens on those networks as well. Um, but it's a place that uh, helps users onboard onto new networks, communities, and projects. Uh, Yazdani and uh, his team have been doing awesome work on that. Uh, yes, John, you want to jump in and give some of your thoughts? Fine. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, everyone uh, who's here knows about Unitab uh, and its functionality, but a uh, like, uh, short description is that Unitab is an onboarding tool and actually a gateway uh, to Web3 for networks and actually communities. Uh, now we have just uh, guest tab, which is like uh, each networks can uh, be listed there and give, give users some uh, a small amount of their uh, guest fee tokens. But in the future, uh, we are going to work on token tab, which is a, a gateway for users to uh, enter the communities by claiming like tiny amount of their community tokens. Uh, and like uh, some something that we are going to uh, add soon uh, on Unitab is Bitcoin Lightning Network. Actually, uh, I, I tried to uh, reach out to the Phantom Foundation today. I'm waiting for their answer. Uh, and actually I, uh, I, I reached out to Telus Foundation and Cadesios Foundation. Uh, so uh, my my opinion my opinion is that we are going to have many chains on Unitap, uh, like in in a, in a near future. So, yeah. Okay. One important thing I I thought of while we were going through is there are, there have been lots of different faucets uh, on various crypto networks forever uh you know the original crypto faucet was uh a bitcoin faucet that back if you'd gone early enough to uh to gavin's faucet you could have claimed five bitcoin for free to anyone that wanted to wanted to click on that faucet which is just absolutely wild from today's perspective um but but people have always wanted to be able to share uh share these tokens the problem with that faucet and and the others and the other sense it is um, the bad actors, the civil accounts come and they ruin it for everybody. Uh, most people would be would be willing to come and just take a little bit and move on. Um, but unfortunately, uh, there's a minority of actors that are willing to exploit the system uh, until it's destruction. Uh, and we've seen many, many faucets. Uh, get defeated, and, and people have tried all sorts of um, remedies to to prevent abuse of, of the faucet. 
Uh, and, and we believe that, that Bright ID is an excellent tool uh, to do that, to make sure everyone gets sort of what they're, what they're entitled to. Uh, and, and bots can't, uh, can't wreck it for everybody. Uh, so we're starting off really small, but we hope that as we, as we build it up and show that it services lots of users, it's robust, people can, people can access it, uh, that more and more things can be given out. Uh, we can use this one sort of central place uh, to, to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, so today the, the claim amounts are, are small, um, but a lot of us are really focused on universal basic income. And we think that, that a way to help get there is sort of through a, a basket of, of micro UBIs. There, there's all sorts of projects, communities that, that would be willing to, willing to share. Um, so we want to create a tool where anyone that wants to share broadly can do it with a few, a few clicks. Um, so that's, that's the dream there. Just reading the, uh, the chat. Um, if anyone has any questions or comments about it, happy to answer those. And I'll throw out a, a thanks. Superfiz was was one of the people that kindly helped uh, donate some some testnet tokens to help prime the tap. Uh, anyone else willing, interested in in helping to prime the tap, we would we greatly appreciate it. Uh, the networks that are there now. Uh, you can just go do it if you go to the the, the funding the funding page. Yeah, yes, Tony. Is there now an easy link to the funding page? Oh yeah, yeah, it's down the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Um, Are you looking for anything specific right now? Uh, yes. Um, yes, yeah, Tony. What are the the ones we definitely know we need more of? Um, are we sharing? Need... Yeah. So it, you can see it in the Unitap. Discord, and and that's another question. Are we sharing that with people? Is that okay to like, like post it in here, for instance, where the Unitap Discord is? Is it public yet or no? It's, it's linked here. It's public. Yeah. I just oh, okay. To... Good to know. So actually, uh, by now we don't have much amount of Cohen, uh, and I think Ring to be. So I think I have it be good if let me check my Rinkaby balance. Uh, yeah, COVID and Rinkaby are the two the two that we're we're lightest on. Yeah, we don't have a, a quick and easy way yet. Um I, I added a suggestion to add to the list of networks, the drop down list, um uh, where you can see the balance. Of, of each one of each of these smart contracts. But if you go to the networks and then paste in one of these addresses, you can see the balance. And we also very much need uh, XDAI is the other, the other thing. You know, uh, That's real money. It, well, it is. It, <laughs> it is. Uh, I need some and, XDAI too, buddy. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and we, we all very much hope that, that, that you tap. So, Unitep means to give out real money, real value. That 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 is that is the goal. Um, as as uh, in the process of building this out, we sort of found a bunch of the other faucet resources that a few months ago we didn't even we didn't even know about. Uh, one uh, one notable one, the the paradigm multi faucet, it is an awesome tool, uh, and um, I think a lot of people don't don't know about it. But it, but basically, you can get um, a pretty reasonable number of testnet gas tokens, a whole bunch of different testnets, and other fake tokens on those networks. So you go on there, you put in your Ethereum address, and with a click, you can claim like six different testnets. And not only do you get the, the, the like the, the ETH asset, you also get the wrapped ETH asset. You get some fake DAI, you get some fake NFTs. So from a from a test standpoint, uh, that's 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 really that's really great. Um, I assume you know the secret theory behind why Paradigm is so great. No, because because no one knows about it. That's <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, so they used uh, they used uh, Twitter 
as their anti-civil mechanism. Um, and the account has to be of a certain age with a certain number of followers. And, you know, it's pretty reasonable thing to do that, that's going to get rid of, you know, the, the lowest grade of, of civil farmer, um, but would not, would not get rid of people that, that were focused. And it's not giving out dollar value assets at this point. Yeah. It's, it's, it's assets that are useful. Um, if you're a developer, that's, that's such a wonderful tool to be able to get some test that. Um, but but we, we, we're pretty sure that, we, as Elon Musk has said, there's a whole lot more than 5% fake Twitter accounts. Um, so if, if people could, could extract money from that faucet, we believe that it, that would be viciously attacked as we have seen every other thing on the internet that tries to, to, to share. Can I offer a suggestion about Unitap? <clears throat> and it, it doesn't, it's not a, a, a feature suggestion, so it's no, no developing, but, um, so I'm, I'm over here thinking, you know, where, where can I find some XDI to send to this faucet? And, um, you know, my language is POAPs. If, um, if people who contributed to the faucet got a POAP for their contribution, they might, and especially if it was um, staged at levels, like, mm. so if you donate 100 XDI, you get the POAP, uh, Unitap XDI. Uh, or, wait, all those words didn't work out. But That's a really good idea. It, because they're, they're free and um, it is supporting a public good and I'll stop talking. I like, I like, and uh, I think, I think as far as like the, the, the paradigm faucet and, and uh, I mean, it works because it's a secret as it also works because um, like it, it, if you're brand new to um, civil attacking, <laughs> You'll find out which which I was uh, when proof of hum not proof of humanity humanity DAO came out. I was like, I want to try civil attacking this thing. So it also used Twitter. I bought some old Twitter accounts with many followers, and they were five dollars each. I don't think I would do that for um, testnet tokens, but if um, like these at civil attackers already have like they already have their their collection of Twitter accounts and other things and SMS numbers and the, and email addresses. They've already got like their, their chunk of, of things that they use whenever they civil attack and they just go from place to place civil attacking things. Um, and so if you've already got that, it's easy to attack something like Paradigm. I just don't think that they even care about testnet tokens. But if, if there was a civil attacker who did that already had like a thousand Twitter accounts that would be bad news for the faucet. The thing that I learned years ago that rocked my world at the time was uh, Twitter um, vote, uh, Twitter poll vote buying uh, wasn't a thing I knew was a thing until until it was. Um, so you can, if you just Google Twitter vote poll buying, you will find many many sites that offer thousands of poll votes uh, for dollars. You know, you get thousands of them for, for a couple dollars. Uh, and I, I did this, I did this once as like part of a community of people that were, that were playing this game. And uh, it, it's, it's wild and you see how broken the system, but like you could buy 5,000 for, you know, 40 bucks or whatever. And all you do, you go on there, you, you enter, you, you drop the link of the poll, you, you say how you want them to vote, how many votes you want to buy, you send them some money, and 10 minutes later, there's your 4,000 votes on a play. I want to do this now. I need to do this. I like, but I, my, my only struggle is like, um, so, you know, I always like try to direct my dollar votes toward healthy projects. And like in this case, it's like directing dollar votes towards something that's like really terrible, but it's so much fun. It's hard to. <laughs> I, yeah. So I, I don't think that most people that it occurs to them that that's a thing and, and, and that like the bar is so yeah. low. So clearly if you're selling thousands of votes, which you're going to be right. Remember, you pay this and within minutes, this hat, it, it's done. It, it's a very fast, it's a very fast process. So like 
clearly they've got this whole thing scripted out where they only have to click a few buttons to to activate it and they're so i mean it's so it's so cheap so how many accounts must they have right yeah you, you i mean it's that you, you can figure out the answer by how many votes they'll give you so if someone is advertising and saying we'll give you 4000 votes for your or even if they have scales they're like if you want 4000 it's going to be this much if you want 20000 you can see how many accounts they have so there's yeah. there's these businesses or people or whatever that that own that many twitter accounts so there you go the the first one i came to at, at uh, instafollowers.co you can do up to 50000 and it, it's there amazing. you go we're just lucky that 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 person with 50,000 Twitter accounts hasn't taken an interest on testnet, testnet tokens yet. Um, yeah, and in general, part of why we focus on Bright ID is that it's a universal solution to this, to this problem instead of trying to solve it for each application that might need such a thing. So, you know, often people coming into Bright ID for a particular project, they're like, oh, this is a lot of work. I don't want to like jump, I don't want to jump through these hoops. And that would be a pretty reasonable opinion to have if they had jumped through all those hoops for one thing. But it's not, but it's not one thing. There are a bunch of different integrations. And once someone is onboarded and verified on Bright ID, it's trivially easy to use it again on the next thing. So most of us on this call have many Bright ID integrated apps uh, that 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 we use. Um, sorry, reading uh, super physicist. Uh, <laughs> get Paul ops now. He's got to deal with poops. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So so all the work that that anyone does to get to get verified for one application. To get the benefits on all on, 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 all, on all the others. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of those things that um, gets better with more participation. And right now we are still um, waiting for that that really big app. And I, I I've got I've got high hopes for Unitap because the thing is like. Yeah, you can't get you can't get uh, like Tinder or something to to switch to Bright ID because it's like wait a minute it's it's like we do you know how much we pay to onboard users and and uh, we can't have anything slow down our 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 onboarding process and there's no way that they would use that but if if there were already 10 million like the more Bright ID users there are the easier it gets to be to pitch to the next. To the next um, application because uh, they're like, oh, okay, uh, most of our users are already using Bright ID. Okay, now we can consider it. Or um, like some of the startups that we work work with, it's actually they have like zero users right now. But when they launch on Bright ID, our users, our fifty thousand users, or however many we have, come and now they're looking at this new app and seeing if they if that's it shows up in the apps tab and so it's it's already a benefit to some new apps um to use bright id and it's just going to become more and more like that in the future so i have high hopes for that and unitap is like one of those things we know that free money sells and we know that um like we need something that makes it easy for new people to start using crypto. I'm not talking about like having a Coinbase account and, and investing in crypto. I'm talking about getting some, um, some tokens on an Ethereum network and, and using apps, using apps that use blockchain. And you need something like Unitap to make that onboarding process easier for everybody. So that could be, it could be a really big thing. It could be where the next million or even 10 million Bright ID users come from. Right. And, and as you were just saying, right, if there are a million or 10 million Bright ID users, it's way easier for the next app. And there will even be some apps that like, that, that's like, that's how, to, that's a great way to launch. Just that like, 
hey, here's a community of, of people that are looking for things to do with their bright ID, give them something cool and they'll show up. Yeah, that's what um, that's what uh, Song of Dao is gonna do. So one of the one of the things that we're hoping to do with the the planned um, rollout of the um, the project based tokens, not just the gas tokens, is we want we want projects to be able to say, okay, here's a little bit of our token, come and participate. And one of the things that Song of Dao is launching is a way to go through and rate um the 5000 songs or um in, in sort of like a, a competition style fashion um where if if the community agrees with you you can you can be you can earn some rewards and stuff but to to participate in this you need a little bit of the song token and we call it song dust because it's just like a little little tiny dusting of that song token is what you need to participate but without something like bright id there's no good way to give that out and not have the Sybils just take way too much. So um, so that's one of the things that we wanna, one of the ones we wanna use with um, Unitap. And that could easily be the, uh, like a, a big draw for um, for the DAO because the DAO wants to expand it. Um, Song, Song a Day wants to have more listeners. The DAO wants to have more members. I could see that being um, a nice way to attract more people. When when someone shows up in the unit app and they're like, oh cool, I can get this this free token that's worth something, and I can do stuff with it, they get excited, they get some, and now Song of Dao has more people coming over and trying out Song of Dao. So, yeah, should be a great tool for lots of new lots of new projects. Uh, um, actually, uh, I have something to add, like. Uh... I, I have many ideas for Unitab, like many gamifications, many uh, like collaborations with other projects. But but uh, the specific specific one is uh, like something like Rabbit Hole that uh, holds some quests and campaigns. Uh, can it, like it, Unitab is so useful and match to them uh, because you know uh, if you want to learn someone to work with Uniswap uh, and, and, and let's say Uniswap like added, added Gnosis chain, uh, you, can, you can easily like give them some amount of XDAI or like uh, other, other token, then, then they can easily uh, uh, learn how to work with Uniswap. So I think this is so useful. Yeah, Victor. So now that you talk about uh, another projects using Unitap, uh, it will be I think it will be useful to talk about how is the process of integration with that kind of projects. I mean, I got a project. I said I want to give a token to my community. I have I need an anti civil tool or a civil resistance tool, and someone just said me, "Hey, Unitap is a good looking project. Look for that." So what I should do? What is the step? how to integrate with the unit app. Do you want to answer that, Yazdani? Do you have, because um, right now it's very manual, but how do you foresee that in the future? Um, so right now you've talked to the unit app dev team. And I think actually because of the curation, because we want to make sure that we don't just put any old, um, well, we, we need to be careful. We don't want to put, we don't want to put um, scams on there. Um, so we do need to be careful. Um, so there, what, what do you see the process being like Yazdani for a, for a project that wants to get listed on Unitap? So, you, you know, uh, as you, as you said, uh, it, it can't be like a totally automatic, uh, because we don't want it like a scam project to be listed on Unitap and like uh, scam people's, uh, but, uh, but you know, that uh, like, I don't know whether you know a Galaxy project or not. If you if you want to like set a set up a campaign on Galaxy, at uh, first you need to uh, like go there and uh, like submit your information about your project, uh, and they, they they give access to you to like uh, launch a campaign. Uh, if 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 they if they see that uh, you're you're fine with that and uh, you're not a scam, uh, so this this will be like this uh, project. Go goes to a uh, 
uh, like the dashboard, uh, fill out the form. Uh, and then if, if we say that uh, they're not a scam, uh, we will give them access to like uh, drop their tokens. But, uh, but you know, it, it, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not designed yet, uh, but we, we're gonna work on that. Yeah, I think that's a good first step is just have a form that allows people to um, request access or request um, listing on, on Unitap. And then we just, I think at the beginning, it'll be small enough that a team can manage it. And I work with the, the fraud detection team on, on Gitcoin. So I'm aware of this. So their scale is in the thousands of um, grants that they have to review. And they review, their team reviews every single one. Um, so I, I, I think this sort of thing, you never, you never get past this manual review idea of needing ha having some guidelines and and yeah. needing to review one way i could imagine that working um so like on uniswap anybody can just drop a token on uniswap but only some of them end up in like sort of the curated list um there's a variety of lists so so it might be that we could have kind of like hey here's here's the curated part this is where most users should play and here's the wild west where anyone can just like do a, do a token, but it's not going to be like blessed. Um, but that seems to be a lot of work. So we, we know that Unitab is non-lucrative, right? Yes. It's non-lucrative. It means it's no, it's no one to- Oh, there, there is a business model for it. So it's a business model. Yeah. So the, it's, it's very simple to understand. Um, and it in fact, it shows up when you go to fund the different faucets. It says the 1%, and this is something that could be adjusted as we learn more, um, but 1% of, of anything that's put in to be distributed goes to support the curation, the development, mm -hmm. um, things like that. It goes to support Unitap, and then 99% goes in to be distributed to, to people. Okay. So that's the business model. It's very simple to understand. So and, and there's a base fee. There's a base fee for any chains that 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 want to be listed on there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So chains, you, yeah. chains. We expect so chains, especially rich chains. We want to charge sort of an integration fee to to set up for that fee, for that chain to be on there, and then also to unlock their tokens to be on the token side, because uh, you need to the, the <laughs> you can't have tokens on your chain until your chain's there. Um, and the expected way is that like we give a little bit of gas uh, as a service that requires that doesn't require a blockchain transaction, but when they claim the tokens, they do have to do a blockchain transaction on that blockchain. So which we we provided them the gas, we helped them get it in their MetaMask. These are all simple things. What it is, they need to like turn around and use that gas that we just gave them to claim to claim their other free tokens on that network. Um, yeah, but what do you tell me like a business model that is not exactly like a business model because I mean, it's just to maintain the system because you need to pay for the, for the, um, the domain on, on the internet, you need to pay for the developers that are making the, the, the development of the, so it's not profitable in that way. So oh, well, I think it is profitable. I mean, I don't think we've talked about um, how the profit sharing is going to work, but what we do know is that this is a this is a bright Dow project. Oh, okay, cool. So the income that comes in, it, so when income comes in, this and this is part of the Unitap's team job, and the, and, and this could this could be something that uh, takes a fair amount of work to do, but as we're so you can imagine that there's there could be thousands of tokens being distributed. As people are collecting them, and Unitap is collecting the one the one percent fee from all these different tokens, somebody has to take all these tokens, and then um, do something with them. That 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 one percent. So um, what we've talked about is that that's one of the responsibilities of part of the Unitap team is to take those one, those one percent the fees that that we take, in, and it's going to be in all these different tokens and exchange them for bright token, like figure out what different paths 
to cross them across networks and you know wait to the right time because if you do it too often you're going to lose too much on fees um but you wait until you have the right amount um and then like exchange it for for bright token and that way it goes back into the bright bright dow vault and and then and then any development fees and other other um paying people paying for whatever that can come from um it, it can come from bright dow and it can come from bright dow proposals so it's kind of this this cycle Be, because the alternative to that is to set up another company um and we found that um if because of like the multinational um, reality of of the work that that a lot of us do, it's easier to rather than setting trying to set up a con a, a company in like a bunch of different countries, it's a lot easier just to have a DAO, and have that DAO um, have the revenue from Unitap increase the the value of the DAO's token, and then pay it um the and then the the people that work on unitap make proposals to the DAO and they get paid in the DAO's token um that's just an an existing organization that already spans different different national boundaries we can just use it and so that simplifies that also that it's the DAO is sort of a, a community-minded public goods sort of a thing um that one percent, you know, we'll see if that's the right the right rate going forward. But but imagine a world where millions and millions of people are using Unitap. It's still great getting one percent, so it's actually getting significant money. It, it's, it, I don't think that would be appropriate for like the developers to, to just like take that as profit to line their pockets. While if if BrightDAO gets Richness, like BrightDAO is going to spend that money to make Bright ID and the whole ecosystem better, which is such a wildly different thing than like a company. So, so like profit's not quite the right word here. BrightDAO isn't isn't a formal legal entity, but if it was, it would be more like a nonprofit than than anything else. Um, exactly. No, no one's like entitled to the the excess the excess money. The community manages it for the good of itself in the world yep the excess money would have to be used for the mission of bright dow which is to you can read the mission it says it in the dow but it's basically bright id to support bright id and bright id related projects so it so some of the unitap could go to build other bright id related projects So what do you think that is the UNITAB final form? I mean, what is your vision to the end of the project? Or oh, is like never ending project that you can do everything in UNITAB or something like that? I, li I like Philip's vision. Um, and, and I'll put it in my own words, but I think he said it really well. But the way I think of it is, um, so we believe we're strong believers in universal basic income, and that's why we both got into Bright ID and wanted to see it built. Um, and if you if you want to be truly universal, it really is like something that everyone can get. And there's no qualifications. You don't have to be a member of a certain community or certain anything. You just have to prove that you're a unique human, and there's certain things that should be waiting for you. That's what universal basic income is. And I think that my um, idea of how that might come to pass has evolved over time um, from being something that governments might do to being something that, um, you know, I imagined that it was going to be like one UBI token that, that owns them all <laughs> and, that, uh, and that has like this, this amazing economic model well that hasn't happened like there the 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 ubi token with the amazing economic model that kind of takes over the world has not happened and i don't think it will happen i think what's going to happen is we're going to see people collecting their ubi in a bunch of different tokens and so that's what unitap is is you you get to choose you can't have all of them there's you know there's going to be thousands of tokens it's it's just not practical and doesn't make sense to have all of them but you can imagine that if there's all these different projects trying to attract attention to themselves, 
trying to bring grow their community um, and also businesses just trying to give back to the world you can imagine that people can show up at unitap and collect something that becomes a real uh, basic income for them and so that's to me that's the grand future that's the grand vision of it Yeah, I think that's it. In addition to you, we are. So, go ahead. I was going to say that that I've I've dreamed for a long time I, that that there was a way that people that wanted to share with the world could do that. Um, you know, we have horrible inequality in the world. There's there's a small portion of people that have way more reset resources. Than they possibly need, even that the even that that that, that they that they more than they they want. But what to, what to what to do what what do you do what do you do with it? How do you? It, it's it's a lot of work actually to to give to effectively give. Um, we know that direct like cash transfers are an extremely effective way, but it's super hard to do. Like as a company, as a person, like you can't give to everyone. Unitap, like if Unitap works, if if it's got millions and millions, billions, it's just like look, you can just send resources here, and it will develop, and it will split them out wildly, you know, widely to 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 all the people. And like that's a that's a crazy concept. We don't we don't have a thing like that, but really we could. It's it's. The, the pieces are kind of starting to line up. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but if we find a few people that go, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to really fund these taps with things other than test tokens. Um, free money sell. I am, I am confident that if that if we're giving out valuable things, that people will come and collect them. And if people come and collect them, I think people will be willing and, and, and they can and people can look from the outside and see that this is working appropriately and it's not getting taken advantage of. That more people will put more in the tap, which will make more people show up, which will make more people put in the tap. And you can imagine, you know, five years and hundred million people collecting these things, like there's a lot of money. There's a lot of people that would like to share. We just don't have a mechanism now. Let's give it to them. Yeah. And so like right now, you've already got. Like that, like Superfiz was saying earlier, hey, X dies real money. Like if I put money in that tap, I'm giving away real money. Well, yes, you are. <laughs> so That's like you start doing this. Like if you're a philanthropist and you decided tomorrow, hey, I want to put a million dollars in X die in the in the X die pool. Like you can you could do that. The only um, thing you need to to do is trust. Brady is trust. That's yeah, so you, you need to. Well, and that's that's what that's what Philip was talking about. Is like right now, it's like okay, well, that's only going to reach fifty thousand people, so it's not as as attractive. But once you see that, wow, like anyone can join Brady, anyone can get verified in Brady, like this can have global impact. It starts to become more attractive to do something like that. Brady needs still needs to prove itself, but the only way it's gonna actually prove itself is by having real money on the line and lots of users trying to get in, like, can they get verified? Does it do an accurate enough job? Like, right, is, like, is it inclusive where it needs to be and exclusive where it needs to be? Um, right, inclusive of all the real people, exclusive of all the bad actors. So, so UBI, we'll, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. UBI yeah. is essentially a faucet, right? like whatever it ends up being it will have to be a faucet and the thing about a faucet is the the person has to go to the faucet and do something to get what they're trying to get so there's an action like we were i was i don't know if sorry i showed up a little late so i'm not sure if anybody mentioned that this but um they did a po app delivery last night that they called a premium po app and i think the idea was they were trying to add steps to make it a little harder to get so that it decreased the value of the farmers trying to get it. So what I noticed about that is that it was the user having to go and do something in order to get it. And I think what you're talking about is the faucet is the user having to do something and that's what makes it less valuable for whoever is trying to automate the, the farming that, of what's need, coming out of the faucet. Need valid, they need a valid bread ID account. That's when you, because you you can you need them to only be one person, right? You need them right. to only so, be one so, person doing what whatever they're doing. Do yeah, so, so, 
any user goes to unitap.app, they validate with their bright ID. And then right now we're, we're working with a one week claim cadence. So each week you'll be able to come back and claim a fresh basket of things. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to come back every week, but you're welcome to come back every week. You can't come back every day. We only like it, it resets once a week yeah. for, each, each, for each individual. But please well, do, don't forget that the other size has to do something too. I mean, not only the people that get from the faucet, but the people that want to give to the faucet. They had to do a lot of things to be sure that their, their money is not being wasted, that there's going to get to the people that they want to, to give. And that is what Unitap is going to really help about, more to the people that want to give, to the people that want to receive. So it's involved more than actions that only get from the faucet. You need to put the faucet in working. And that's a lot of work for the people that want to give. So kind of the way the dApps are benefiting from Bright ID on their side and the users are using the dApps. Same idea. Exactly. Yeah, so it's not that hard to imagine a lot of people willing to come to one website once a week to claim to claim to claim a bunch of different things, right? But that that same user is unlikely to want to go to lots of different websites every week to claim from here, 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 here. Uh, so 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 we think that there can be much better like scale of distribution, having like one place that that kind of everybody comes for everything. You know, we we like to go to the grocery store because it has all the groceries we want, as opposed to like going to, you know, just the butcher shop and like the farm that, that sells, the farm that grows this vegetable and a different farm that grows that vegetable and like the baker, hey, it takes you long. I'm going to one, go to one stop shopping. Well, I got uh, another question that I asked this before the other week, but for the sake of the recording, I'm going to ask it again about the NFTs, remember? So it's going to work, how is going to work, uh, what ideas or what can you imagine that could be done with this Unitab project and NFTs? So we definitely haven't built anything on that yet, but it, we have we have talked about it, and I think I think it's the fun it's the fun use case. So so you know there could be a there could be an NFT section, you know, a gas section, token section, NFT section, uh, and you know artists could put up their collection and just let people let people mint them. And hey, you know it's like it's one 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 per person. Um, uh, also. We've only we've kind of talked about it, but not explicitly, right? So on the token side specifically, we we want to limit the number of of things of tokens that any get user can claim in a, in a period. We, we single single digits and probably um, uh, stride is that the word? Uh, di different tiers based on your bright ID level. So, you know, maybe it's like, hey, you only get to claim one thing if your meat's verified and three things if your beats are verified and five things if your aura verified. We'll figure that out later. But, but uh, and hopefully everyone will get to the top level and can claim, but let's say, let's say so, so everyone's claiming five. Well, maybe there's a hundred or a thousand things there. So, so you have to pick, because what, what we don't want is we don't want people to go through and just take one of everything because they can. We yeah. want people. We want people to choose the things that they want, so that they actually like value them. So we we think it's really important to say, hey, like you can claim a bunch, and ne next week come back and claim claim more, and cl feel free to claim different things. But um, we think the whole ecosystem will be healthier with a limit to the number of things you can claim per period. Yeah. Plus, at some point, there will if if we just allow everybody to claim everything, at some point it starts to favor people who know how to write scripts. So we're not talking about bots that come in multiple times and collect things. We're talking about a user who knows how to write an automated script that can go to the website and claim everything. And then the people who don't do that would have to spend hours or even days trying to claim everything. And the person who knows how to write the script can just do that. So yeah, we don't like that. That just doesn't feel right. Like you gotta, you gotta actually learn something about the project have some potential to engage with it and then and then you collect the token in, in the important example so uh some of the eth test nets 
uh, require, for if, you, if you want to do staking on those test nets, it requires 32, uh, 32 of those test ether. Um, and you know, the regular gas faucet is given out 0 0.01, you know, a tiny amount, which is plenty to do. That'll do a bunch of transactions. That's from a gas standpoint, that's fine. It's not enough for staking. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to give 32 even test ETH to everyone that doesn't even have an interest in staking. But if you saw that in a list, you're like, oh, I could get eight cents worth of X die today or 32 test ETH. Well, if the thing you actually want is 32 test ETH because that's useful to you, great, claim it. Like whatever, w like what you're giving up is is eight cents, and you're perfectly happy to make that tr make that trade. But I would rather the person that doesn't actually want 32 test ETH to take the eight cents. Like that just that that make that it, it just makes sense. And and for like like Gnosis Gnosis wants active users to like have assets on Gnosis chain, like it might make sense for them. Like they want to expand the use of XDAI. Like they might think that that's a good, a good thing or just people that are being charitable. Hey, I want to put stuff in Unitap. I don't have a community token. What should I put? Please put an XDAI. I mean, lots of people that are, can now claim money, um, but we think it's important to, to limit the claims. It'll just be a healthier ecosystem. We think. <laughs> we'll iterate and find out. That's the idea. Duke, you look like you're ready. I am. I'm just trying to figure out how to ask my question. So if so I need 32 test ether to, to run a staking node, and I think you might have said some form of this already, but I'm I didn't quite catch it. If I need 32 ether, you don't want me to be able to necessarily take it because then people that really only need 0 0.01 for gas might take 32 and it depletes the faucet, right? Yeah. But so, so, so there's there's one part live right now today, and that's that's the the gas faucet. So it's giving you very small amounts of of gas. Pretty soon we're going to open up the token side. And I would think that's where I would put like the 32 test ethers on the token side, because it's not it's not for gas, it's for some other purpose. Uh, so like there would be, hey, you could get some bright tokens, you could get some Gitcoin tokens, you get some one hive tokens, you could get 32 Ropston ETH. Uh, you could get 32, you know, uh, girly ETH. And great, if if the thing that you most need is 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 those 32, great. Click, click on those. But then people that don't need staking levels of testing, which is the vast majority of people in the world have no need for that. I really don't want them taking, I'd much rather them take something that like makes sense for them to take. So you have to de-incentivize them taking it if they don't need it. Or you have to incentivize them not taking it. So right. like if, if you say require a 10, a, a 10 die, donation to the to that pool or some kind of donation that cost them a little bit but they get something that they couldn't have gotten any other way we i i'm hoping that we don't take that we never charge anything for someone claiming off of unitap the, the difference is so you're going to show up there's going to be a hundred things available at, at the tap and you're allowed to take five you can take any five you want and like the the like dollar value of those things might be quite divergent and, and maybe like at the moment, oh, like, hey, the first thousand people that take X token, like, hey, that's a, like a really good, good deal for that. Uh, but the idea is there's a hundred choices, you only get five. So we know you're not gonna take everything because you're not allowed to. And you're gonna, make, you're gonna make your own decisions on what you value and different people will value different things. And if what you need for like, it is, is test ether, great. Take, take that. And if you instead need eight cents worth of X die, take that. And I think so the default will be that most, that, that, right, that, that a lot of people will, it's going to be wild. We're going to see, I think we'll see, right? There's some people that are like, what they need is UBI, like their family is starving, pennies matter to them. They're going to take whatever's the most valuable in like dollar terms. And then there's other people that are going to be like, oh, what cool communities here? I just want to like learn about different tokens and try different things. And other people are like, oh, what I need is 
staking ether. Um, and we want to service all of those, all of those different customer types. So it might be that people just generally do the right thing. Well, we, we don't need them to, they can make whatever choice they want. They just can't make all the choices. That, yeah. that's, so, that's, that's so, the key. So to the way to stop people, so the thing that, the pro, one of the problems we're worried about is um, that if we made the 32 testnet ETH available to everybody all the time, then it would, a bunch of people that were just coming in and didn't even know what that was. They're real humans, but they don't, they don't know why they need it, but they can take it. So they just take it. Uh, and then it depletes the faucet unnecessarily. They're, they get this 32 testnet ETH that they're not going to use. So the way with, that we solve this problem is we give them other choices that are better for them. So if you get oh. to choose five things and you get five things, there's five things out there that are worth a dollar each. Um, and then there's testnet tokens that are worth zero to you. You're not going to pick the testnet tokens. You're going to pick the other five things that are worth a dollar. And so that's how we hope to solve the problem. That's neat. That's a neat way to solve right. it. But, right. but clearly, if what you actually need is the, is the testnet token, great. And, and there's lots of people that they, they would have, if there was some mechanism for them to pay a dollar, they would happily do that. They just need the stupid testnet tokens. Uh, but there's not like a mechanism, to, there's no place to go to buy them. So you got to know somebody. Right, you got to know somebody, or you can just go to Unitap. And so, you know, maybe there's there's a thousand people that would really love to be able to get 32 Robston ETH. Uh, great. It's just, there isn't, a, there isn't a mechanism. Well, actually, there's, there's the paradigm multi faucet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, and and we also hope that that uh, that like test net test nets are well. That's a useful tool that we can provide to developers in the ecosystem. It's gonna it's gonna fall into the background. Most users will, will never claim any of the test net stuff. They just just like they don't use it today. I expect that the, the 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 real the real chains will will be the dominant the dominant ones that get used, and um, and right so now you know, it's all it's all EVM compatible stuff. Uh, but we we hope to add a bunch of other chains, and and we hope to even get them to pay for that so that we can fund both. But like Solana has a lot of money, so and, and cheap transact like let's let's get let's get Solana on there. Let's 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 get let's get let's get fans on. Let's get Avalanche, um, and and we think it behooves those networks to get a bunch of real actual users that are now onboarded onboarded onto their system. It's it's really hard to acquire your first bit of something, and Unitap wants to make it easy for you to to do that. Also, so right now. If you go to Unitap, you can easily add things to MetaMask. All the networks would add to the RPCs and whatnot if you if you click. Um, in the future, for non EVM things, it'll be the same. Like there'll be a button to click to click to download the the wallet for that for that network. So we feel like we're offering a service to those those other networks to help them get get a get first time users. That like that should appropriately count in their metrics because like it is a real person. So you're serving up users to them through essentially a data connector that you build for them to come in through. It's like a sort of like Chainlink. They have uh, Chainlist. Yeah, but they also have um, the way outside data sources come in is they end up essentially paying for a data a data connector that connects their data into the internal system into chain link's right. network yeah there's chain there's chain link and there's chain list and um chain list uh we're, we're partly taking some inspiration from them about easily adding other evm compatible networks that would that's what chain list is and then there's chain link uh who we've also um approached them and and um, talked with them about partnerships um because we uh, they have relationships with a bunch of these other bunch of these different chains, and, and like you said, they have these um, 
uh, like re relationships with 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 sharing data. Um, but what we um, so what we're talking with them about is the ability to um, like kind of automate the 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 distribution of of the gas tokens because uh, I think like someone said earlier in the call, you can't this it's like a person cannot execute a smart contract to go get the gas tokens like something actually needs to give them the gas tokens and you need to um so so there needs to be like a smart contract that's that or or some sort of process that's that's actually giving them out to certain addresses that have been verified and right now that's kind of a centralized point of failure where we have these um centralized um smart contracts that where someone needs to have this role to be able to um like have the, have some sort of private key that that can run run a script in the back end to be able to give out to, to authorize giving out tokens to the to the addresses that that get in there um so we want to use chainlink to be able to automate that on a bunch of different um networks so so yeah we're talking to them we're going to use them um they they have uh they already can do it on um let's see which well, they've got Ethereum, BNB, Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, Phantom, but um, which we're going to have all of those on Unitap. But um, there's also some other ones that are not EBM compatible that we'll be able to use. Shaheen, I see you you wrote something. I sort of understand, but maybe you could could talk through. Okay, no, I just uh, listened to you guys and just had an idea because uh, there are a lot of people who, for nothing or no reason, they just like to drain the testnet faucet. So in that uh, case, we can um, uh, influence people that if they funds their testnet, unused testnet actually, so they they could get a re uh, reward. So there will be, I think, uh, it could be a good idea to not to drain out and uh, maybe it will flip out that people will uh, take other faucet claim from there and just fund it here. I did not follow. I think I sort of understand. Um, so you're talking about people who have nothing to gain except just messing around with, and making things harder for other people that want to use test nets. Um, and would they come into Unitap with their bright ID accounts and just take the testnet tokens, even though they don't need them, ignoring the other things that they could get instead and just take them? Uh, that that just remains to be seen. If if we have if we run into that problem, we may have to rethink how we do things. But and, I mean, and the biggest thing I would it, it, it's so either we need to get more more valuable things to, to compete against that, or we need to shrink the number of claims that someone can make. But it, we want it, so, you know, you were asking about my long-term vision. It should be true that in the future when this is up and running and, and, and solid and a lot of people, that it's not hard to find things that you wanna spend your, your claims on, that, that, there, that there, are more, there are more attractive things available to you than claims that you have to spend, so that 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 you you have to make have to make hard hard choices. Um, it, and another thing, I I've also uh, we should have like a a raffle, a spin the wheel, or something like that, where it's like if you don't if you don't see a specific thing you want to claim, it's like you can just like pound the I'm feeling lucky button and like you'll get some random thing and it'll probably be not exciting, but maybe you win. So that, that, that people that don't actually know what they want, there's still a thing they can do and it probably results in they just get some not that exciting token they never heard of. But maybe it's like, hey, you know, every day there's gonna be someone that wins $100. Great. So. If you don't see one you like, well, you can at least just spin the wheel and maybe you'll get lucky. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, in somebody was asking about uh, the NFTs, right? Um, 
same thing on the NFTs. It's like, okay, well, here's a bunch of NFTs that like I'm specifically asking for. And then there could also be just like a pot of NFTs. That you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> spin, <laughs> spin the wheel. And then you're going to get, a, you're going to get an NFT. You don't know which one. And there's, there's magic. I, I was into art blocks when it sort of first, first, first launched before it got crazy and popular. And it was really fun to not, not know exactly what you were, what you were going to get out of the sort of the NFT vending machine. Uh, and in our blocks, at least you knew vaguely kind of what you were going to get <laughs> in the, in the Unitap NFT wheel, who knows, like it could be anything. So when a faucet starts emitting real money, what happens to those tokens next on the market? Does every token that comes out of a faucet that's attended for UBI get sold like pretty quick? Or do people save? I guess they save some of it. I guess it's just like income. They don't always spend it right away. Yeah, it really depends. That's something that we decided to do early on with Bright ID is just not try to interject in the economics of things. Um, we've noticed that there's other a lot of other projects, and um, one of the ones that we're friends with we're, we're friends with a lot of them, but one of the ones that we're friends with is um, Proof of Humanity, and they've got their UBI token, and they've got this uh, whole complex thing about about how to manage the economics of that. And, um, and we, we just decided with Bright ID, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna do any economic stuff. We're just gonna handle the one person, one account. And then whatever the token wants, however they wanna handle their, their economics is up to them. So there could, we could see a whole lot of different approaches and that's good. We want, we want to encourage lots of different approaches. Yeah, we so you're, go ahead, please. Just that we, from the from from the early days, you know, we, we were excited about about UBI and sort of considered having like an integrated UBI that 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 like was inherent to to Bredity the way that the UBI token is to Proof of Humanity, um, and we just we could never get comfortable that that we had an exciting, compelling economic model that that made sense at 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 scale that we believed in, but we did believe in the the fundamental sort of technology um, and, and function of what we were building. And we think that any UBI token that someone might have in the future needs Bread ID the tool. And we didn't want one, we didn't want our token to be, to have like preferred status. We wanted all the UBI projects to use Bread ID as their anti-civil mechanism. So there couldn't be like one that was like embedded at the core. We didn't want to, advantage one over all the others because we we didn't we didn't have the answer to like the one uh and we want many experiments um so anybody can use bread id to you and unit have if they want to fairly distribute their token to real humans yeah and some of them might have like some sort of um sync i guess you could call like some use for the token and some of them might just be a vehicle to give away money or to um, maybe give away money and attract attention, um, some combination of that. But it could just be a philanthropist saying, hey, I want to, I choose XDAI coin or USDC, and they've got no advertising motive or anything like that. They just want to, they just want to give away money and have it reach people and go into people's wallets rather than go through some other organization or something like that. Many of them will, they will not be UBI. You know, we, we will like have UBI there, but many of them, like for example, if you, if you claim, if you choose to claim dust token, you can participate in a game in, in Sangada. You know, if, if Aura will use uh, like bright token, if you need bright token to be an Aura player, uh, you can claim some some tiny amount of a bright token and participate in that game. And if if you like it, if you can, like if you see that you can participate in that, you can buy more and continue to like use that system. So UBI is just a it's a good 
use case and UNITAP is essentially a demonstration of that use case or a, a, maybe a, a demonstration and one of the tools that will be needed to carry it out. And that leaves Bright ID open to being able to use for, be used for lots of other things, including the foundational piece for others to build UBI and then other use cases. Yes. Yeah, we, 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 we dream of a future where, where lots and lots of things unrelated to each other use, use Bright ID. Um, and, and each time any of those applications sort of improve Bright ID, improve how, improve how it works, improve the civil detection, all that, the, the, all of the other applications that use it benefit as well. You know, the, the, but the, the technicisms of that were UBI. The problem is that if you get more than one UBI, is not basic anymore <laughs> because yeah, and, you know we're using UBI. UBI is probably not the right term. Yeah, uh, the universal. We, we, we're we're all about the universal. Uh, basic is an obnoxious word in that equation to begin with. That makes no sense, especially when you try to put it across the world. And and income sort of work. I mean, these are these are just like it's it's universal dis distribution. Um, yeah. Is, resources is, is really yeah so so unit tap means universal tap universal faucet so the the thing that we talked about for years before we actually tried try to, to brand it and make it easy to say was we talked about it having a universal faucet and the dream that people could flow all sorts of different value into this thing and it would use bright id to distribute it out to all the people um, we sort of shortened that 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 name down to unit tap meaning universal tap tap as in faucet uh, but that's 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 the idea. Um, and before I ever even knew that Bright ID existed, I I, I I drew pictures of and and wrote up a description of the universal faucet back in 2018. I don't know if you talk uh, about the Bright ID. I mean, how it works because you need to log in with a wallet. Right, and then you need to scan the QR code to prove that you are verified on the right ID. How the technical work with the people that had more than one wallet? What happened when you lose your right ID, or what happened if you get unverified on the application? What kind of technical problems could be there, or what you think about about that kind of situations? Yeah, so yeah. multiple multiple wallets is fine. Uh, you could that that already works now. Um, so your you go in with your one bright ID and you can claim one test net here and one test, you know, you can send different tokens to different addresses. Uh, and and it, yeah, it automatically, you can automatically link your, sort of your bright on the site, your bright ID to multiple wallets. Um, so that, that already, already works. Uh, the claim period is a week and then it resets. So if you lost your bread ID, just come back next week and you start over. Yep, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. Is you you just get um, be, because it uh, the verifications expire after a week. You claim, you know, if you show up this week, you get to claim. You have to do the linking process again every week, but the linking process is very quick. You just scan the QR code and then you claim everything again. And so we don't have to worry about people losing their bright ID, um, losing their browser, a anything that you lost. As long as you can get everything ready again by the next week, you can you can claim again. And the nice thing is it allows you to have fresh addresses so you can come back the next week. So if your goal in using Unitap is maybe to have 10 different addresses on the Gnosis blockchain, that are not linked in any way to each other. You didn't send XDI from one to the other to get it started. You just want to have like 10 accounts um, and unlinkable. You can do that by showing up 10 different, 10 weeks in a row to Unitap and, and uh, onboarding each new, each new address. We're at 315. Um... Happy to answer any final things, but otherwise we should should wrap this up. We'll certainly continue to talk uh, about Unitap plenty in, in future future meetings. Uh, 
the Discord is available and public. Uh, yeah, and we hope that if you haven't already gone and checked it out, you will and let us let us know how it goes for you. Cool. Thank you guys Thank for all you. the information. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording now.